It's gotten to the point where I'm like starting to feel depressed again. I'm just feeling crappy all the time. My energy was so low that I could barely function. Sugar, it's everywhere. Fast food, breakfast cereals, even in the supposedly healthy granola bars. It makes everything taste better, but it also has a nefarious side. I was having crazy mood swings. Every afternoon at 3 p.m. like clockwork, I would crash. My energy was so low that I could barely function. Until one day, enough was enough. I was sitting on the couch feeling pathetic, crying. I felt like nothing would get better. But there was a glimmer of something, a realization. I'd heard that your gut health affects your mental health. Sugar is a drug. You are what you eat. All of these sayings about nutrition. And in that moment, I'd remembered what I'd eaten. A huge bowl of pasta, chocolate, bread, vegan meat with all the barbecue sauce, more bread. I finally put two and two together. My diet was ruining my life. So that night, I vowed to eat better. The rules were simple. Fruit was fine, but absolutely no added sugar. No alternative sweeteners like stevia, not even honey or agave syrup. Yeah, that didn't work out. What I hadn't planned on was not getting enough protein. At the time I swore off sugar, I'd also decided to eat meat. The problem there was I'd been vegetarian my entire life. Small amounts of meat felt really heavy on my stomach and I couldn't get myself to eat much. So I cut out the processed fake meat, but that left a really big gap in my diet. So I started eating yogurt with honey and protein bars and powders with erythritol. I had just started this diet and it was already back to the drawing board. The new rules were no added sugar, but eat the foods high in protein while slowly introducing meat. I've substituted the sweetened yogurt for one of my new favorite dishes that I'll show you in just a bit. And although the diet itself has been fine, this was not the last difficulty I faced. This challenge brought to light some of my worst qualities. I'm hungry, but I just don't feel like making anything right now. In order to make this work, I had to life hack the heck out of myself. Because I will almost always choose the easiest option available to me, I had to figure out which foods were easy to prepare but don't break the diet. After deliberating over it for way too long, I finally figured out what I'll eat. Every morning I have eggs with onion, spinach, mushrooms, and peppers. All the veggies are cut up and frozen so they won't go bad before I get to use them, and then I just pop them in the pan in the morning. Then I have a sweet potato on the side to complete the breakfast. For lovensies, I make a protein shake. The protein powder is straight pea protein, so the only sweetener is coming from the fruit. Like I mentioned earlier, I replaced the sweetened yogurt with one of my new favorite dishes, and that is this. Chickpea pasta with a sugar-free tomato sauce, ground beef mixed in there, and a side of broccoli, and it is really good. Good. The tomato sauce makes the ground beef a little more palatable for my former vegetarian self. And I've always loved broccoli, so I just eat that one as is. I was about to show you all the snacks that I keep around, but I have been putting off grocery shopping, so I don't actually have anything to show you today, but what I normally eat would be uh, lots of almonds. I usually have celery and carrots with hummus, and then I keep some fruit in stock for when those sugar cravings are at an all-time high. I'm working on increasing my protein consumption, which one, I think will make me feel better, and two, I'll be growing my glutes, which will be the next challenge. These obstacles were difficult, but I do think I handled them well for a health noob. But then came the end boss of this challenge. It was bigger, stronger, and scarier than what I faced before. My mom. When I decided to quit sugar, it was five days before Christmas. This meant telling my mom I wouldn't be eating pies, brownies, cinnamon rolls, or cookies. I like a cookie. My mom wants me to be happy, but in her mind, no sweets means sad, restrictive, must hate yourself. So she would say things like, well, you could just have one. Or Tegan, how could you go from being vegan to a meat-eating, sugar-hating wackadoo? Or something like that. It's really hard to make a change when the people closest to you are unhealthy or are discouraging of what you're trying to do. The thing is, changing minds is pretty much impossible. Only the person can change their own mind. They have to be open and willing to hearing new ideas, otherwise it doesn't matter what you say. Before I get to the rest of this challenge, if there's anyone else out there who's been feeling discouraged by their loved ones, I'm gonna tell you how I've been handling it. Since we can't control what others do and say, we have to turn inwardly instead. I control how I think about things. I control the beliefs I create about myself. Realizing I was in control was the biggest eye-opener of my life. I didn't have to be depressed. I didn't have to waste my life wishing that someone or something could change. I could change. Because I realized that I was in control, I was able to make a massive diet change. Three months ago, I was spiraling into a funk, and if I'd kept going, I would still be there right now. The first thing I did was recognize what was happening. Training myself to think more objectively is really hard, and it took me 21 years just to discover it. It's still difficult to do in the moment, but what I'm about to share with you has made the biggest emotional and mental impact, and it's really what has enabled me to stick with this diet. Once I broke out of the sad head trash thing, I basically did a journaling exercise, but up here. I thought about how I felt now, mentally and physically, how terrible it was. And then I imagined, what if nothing changes? What if five years goes by and nothing's happened? What if I got to the end and I realized I couldn't do any of the things that I wanted? That struck fear in my heart. And this kind of thinking, when used constructively, gives me momentum, it gets me out of my comfort zone, it gets me towards what I want in life. So now I knew what I didn't want. 
So what did I want? They say you can't quit bad habits, only replace them with better ones. So I needed to come up with Taken 2.0. What does she like? How does she feel in her own body? What kind of beliefs does that Taken have about life? At that time, I'd come to the conclusion that it was time for a drastic change. I knew what I did and didn't want. So now it was just time to cement it in. Step one, get rid of all of the sugary things in the house. If it's not here, I can't eat it. Step two, keep thinking about the reason I'm doing this. Thinking these thoughts just once won't create a new identity. Repeated thoughts and especially repeated actions will create stronger connections in the brain so that over time, it becomes easier to slip into the new version of myself. And as silly as the actions seem on the outside, I think it really helps to become a little obsessed with the journey of getting to this new, better, healthier identity of myself. Step three, celebrate every time I see that delicious looking cupcake, but I just decide not to eat it. Shame and guilt over messing up aren't nearly as effective as focusing on the wins. It's been over 90 days since I quit sugar. I no longer crash at 3 p.m. every day, and what's even better is that the constant brain fog finally lifted. I'm not stuck in this constant loop of negativity anymore where I'm starting the day feeling 50% and then falling into bad habits and patterns. I wake up, eat good food, I lift weights now. This challenge even inspired me to work on my YouTube channel, which has been a dream of mine since I was a kid. I guess the best way to explain it is that I feel like I have the bandwidth to enjoy life now. I never thought I'd get here, but I'm at the point where I don't want to go back to eating sugar. Instead of only being able to wish and dream about what I could do with my life, I'm actually able to live it. What I'm doing feels amazing and I think will compound into more awesomeness in the future, so I'm not stopping at 90 days. In fact, I think this is just the start. Thanks for watching, bye! It is December 20th, 2021. My life's about to change.